Good afternoon, good morning, everybody. Welcome to this week's edition of the uh, Friday Fundamentals. It's a Q&A session. We've uh, asked you to submit through email some questions, and I thank those who, uh, of you who have. Uh, from those questions, we have uh, gathered up about five different uh, topics here that we're going to cover today. Uh, these topics hopefully will uh, address uh, a lot of people and, and some of their concerns and kind of help out with some of the you know, finer aspects of SoftPlan. So we're going to get started. Our first question, actually there's two questions we're going to cover off here, and they deal with offsets. The question that came in was how to handle split-level or multi-level homes. And a question that kind of goes along with that was as as follows, I occasionally have a gap between the upstairs and downstairs. How do I fix that? I have created a little bit of a, a graphic here to kind of explain how we're going to tackle these questions. Uh, this shows us a basic elevation of a split-level home. We have to kind of decide what floor plans or what levels are going to be drawn together. And I've kind of color coded them here so we can see that in the purple we're going to create our lower floor plan, the foundation. And above the grade in the uh, red, we'll create the upper floor plan. So I've already laid out the floor plans themselves. It's fairly straightforward. There's the lower floor plan. Here's the upper. It's just basically um, your know, exterior walls drawn. I want to point out, though, towards the back of this simple house, the two walls at the back, actually, they are two walls and as opposed to a single wall. So if I were to edit one of the walls at the back, you can see from the highlight. That is one wall to the midpoint and then a separate wall on the other side. This is because eventually with this house, we're going to have different plate heights towards the back. Actually, the whole right side would have a different plate height towards the left. We need to make sure that when we have walls that are in plane with each other, but they're going to be on different levels, we need to separate those walls. So they need to be drawn separately. Right now, there's no differentiation between the levels of my left and right halves. They're all currently with an offset of zero, and this is base, the, the basics of the question. How do we deal with offsets and floor levels when dealing with a split-level home? I'm going to take us now into our floor system mode. We're going to create the floor system for this building. Draw floor system. I'm going to use a manual trace here because I want to separate the left and right sides. So I'll click on manual trace. I'll get the right side in and then just trace the left. An auto trace will trace but it will be sensitive to the exterior bearing walls. The wall in the middle of this structure right now is a partition, it's non-bearing, so an auto trace would have created a single floor system for the entire floor plan. We wanted to make sure they're separated. Uh, I made no consideration for the joist spans. Obviously the joist spans are, are too great, that's not the issue. Our concern here now is to raise one side of the house up about four feet. To do so, I'm going to use my edit command. I'm going to edit ideally the lowest object of the floor system. So that's going to be my mud sill or the sill plate. And I want that difference of level to be four feet. So I'll set to four feet up, make sure it says up. Hit OK. And if I do a cleanup, there's a number of ways to clean up. Here's the icon in the toolbar. Could also hit Control C to do a cleanup or miscellaneous cleanup, they all do the same. And after a cleanup, what has happened here is that the floor system items all kind of recalculate their position based on the last object I edited. So if I edit now the floor joist, for example, on the right side, they have recalculated their position or offset based on what I modified with the sill plate. So it should be four feet, 
one and a half inches. That one and a half inches is the depth of the mud sill or sill plate. However, if I come to the left side and edit the joists there as well, they have the same position or offset. So I need to separate them so one side remains at well, basically zero, while the other side gets raised four feet. In order for that to occur, I need to differentiate them through a level value. So here we have position and level. By default, all uh, floor joist items will get the same level value, number one. That way, in you know, a simple house, if you are modifying your floor system items, everybody in the same level will clean up accordingly and it just saves you from having to edit each individual joist item. You just need to modify one, do a cleanup, and all others of the same level will modify themselves accordingly. Well, in this case, we need to different, uh, set a different level value from the left side versus the right side. I can edit each object, set their level here, but a much more efficient way is under the Draw menu and using the level command. This is a box feature, so we can simply box in, in this case, once a half of the building. And it'll ask me for a level value. Anything completely in that box I just sketched will be changed, and if something was partially in that box, it would be ignored. And all I'm going to do is set that to level two. So now I have two different levels, but a quick tip if I come up to Options and Visible Items, I'm allowed to check this option here. It's called Show Joist Level. So when you're starting to deal with split-level homes or different levels within your floor system, a sunken living room, for example, is another uh, area where you'd need to use different levels. If we turn that on, what happens here is that the program will color code the floor system items not by their type of object but instead by their level assignment. So a quick glance based on the colors I see I can tell that the left side is one color right side being the other that means that they're at different level values. Now I can in this case edit my sill plate on the left side and reset its position or offset back to zero, hit OK, do another cleanup, and if I were to edit a joist on the left side, it has the appropriate offset value, an inch and a half above the sill plate, but if I were to edit the right side, it maintains its level value and maintains its offset, so it's still at level one, and being at a different level, it can have a different position or, or offset value. If I were to take this drawing next into profile mode, we can see from a profile, and if you're not familiar with profile, basically it, it's like an elevation on all four sides. This dotted green line we see around the perimeter is the baseline. Or, or what soft plan determines as zero, so everything gets offset up or down relative to the zero point. The right side of my building has been raised four feet above that baseline. Um, a quick question here from the chat, is there a particular reason why the higher floor is one and the lower floor is two? No, as long as they are different numbers, it doesn't matter the order of those numbers, and I suppose to make sense of it all, it may have been more appropriate, I suppose, to set level two to the right side, but as far as the program is concerned, it doesn't really matter what the level value is, as long as they are different, then they can be set differently. If I were to generate a quick elevation of my front view, we can see now how the floor plan has raised the walls of on level two, or I'm sorry, on le yeah, on level one to be up four feet. However, we got to also modify the position of the basement walls. So to do that, I'll open up my lower floor plan. This being a, a basement, the basement will have 
as far as its floor system is concerned. Slabs, I'm going to use auto trace because the partition in this case has been changed into a concrete wall so it is bearing. So an auto trace will find each half. And I can edit at this point the slab on the right side. And the first thing you should notice is that it already has a level two. The reason for that is when you draw a slab, slabs automatically get a different level value. So if I were to draw a third slab, it would have level three. The fourth slab would have level four and so on. This is because it is common that you would have different positions of your slab in a basement. For example, your basement slab versus your garage slab versus your porch slab. It's very uh, common that you'd have different slabs for uh, different elevations, so the program automatically assumes that to be the case and assigns them different level values. That meaning I can punch in here four feet, four feet up, and that slab now is four feet up. However, being a non-structural slab, it doesn't do anything to these uh, structural walls around its perimeter. From profile view, the walls have not changed their position. To do that, I need to do it manually. And an easy tool to do that is under the Edit menu and a tool here called Wall Height. Again, it's a box feature. I'm going to box in the right side, because this is where I want to change the offset for. It allows me to change the height, that's the name of the tool, but it also allows me to change the position or offset, and I want this to be four feet up. That's the difference between my floor systems. If I were to generate an elevation again, this is the result of doing that change. This now ties into the second part of the question, which is I occasionally have a gap between my upper and lower. This is what I've gotten. The gap is there because there's a difference in plate height or wall tops between the lower floor and the upper floor. General rule is that the program will assemble or stack the highest point of the floor below, which is the top of my concrete wall here on the right, to the lowest point of the floor above, which is going to be, well, the house walls on the left side of the building. In order to avoid that gap, a crucial part of creating a drawing in Softland, especially if you have multiple plate heights in your drawings, is to establish a common corner and apply a reference point to that corner. I'm going to switch us back to drawing mode. Uh, in this again in my upper floor plan. From the end of the draw menu is the reference command. There are four reference point symbols, but the first one here, reference circle, is the one that is most important. The other three have a purpose, therefore merging drawings, but the first one, the reference circle, allows us to align drawings uh, in three dimensions. So I'm going to pick the reference circle. My next task then is to pick a corner that's common throughout the whole building's construction. I'm going to say the top uh, left and add the reference point there. You'll notice I was careful. I wanted to make sure the reference point went to the outside bearing edge, the edge of the stud, rather than the inside edge or the outside of the sheathing, or sorry, the outside of the siding, because I want to put that reference point in the same alignment corner in the uh, foundation plan as well. I'm going to come back to drawing mode, reference, add the same reference circle, put it on the same corner, and the program is going to use that point as a means to aligning the drawings. And if I come back to my elevation, this has now eliminated that gap. Okay, so that's how we can create a split level home. The trick there is to make sure you have the appropriate level values assigned to the correct uh, parts of your floor system. And a, a big help there is to make sure, let me just go over that again, in floor system mode, options and visible items, you turn on this show joist level. Because that visual as to their coloring 
really helps to differentiate to, or to allow you to verify if you have the appropriate level values assigned to the correct items. And uh, assuming they are, then you'll know that you can modify their positions or offset accordingly. Everything should line up. Uh, there's a question here. Do you not have to make the partition wall 12 feet high? Yes, there might be some consideration, uh, and this would be the partition in the middle here. Let me get back to drawing mode. Uh, in my uh, drawing, actually, I'd probably leave this at 8 feet high because I would add a knee wall in the foundation above the concrete wall. Um, briefly, draw a wall, add a partition. You can sketch it on top. That wall can be edited to be hidden. Oops. Got too many walls there. There's the partition. If I edit the wall to be hidden, it won't print. I can come to the common tab and remove it from cleanup. That's important as well because if you're going to remove a wall from cleanup, this allows you to go to the walls tab and manually change its offset. This needs to be four feet up to sit on top of that concrete wall. And the concrete wall itself would not have an offset. So that's how you would handle that scenario, that common partition. You would have a knee wall ideally in the basement And in the main floor plan, this wall would be built on top of the floor system of level two, or as I have done mistakenly, I suppose, uh, level one is on the right side. So it sits on that floor system, and underneath it or between the two floor systems would be the knee wall, which I've added in the other drawing. Okay, so that's our quick lesson on appropriately using your level tool and making sure you have a reference point set. And again, the reference point is vital if you're gonna have multiple plate heights in your design. Our next question deals with multi-componented openings. And it as follows, when drawing a door and side lights from the libraries, I cannot add a transom to span across the door and the side lights. Softland only adds the transom to the door itself. Before I explain that, I'm going to increase my wall heights here. I'm going to make 10 foot walls on the one side of the building. This is so when I add a transom, there's enough room above the wall, or sorry, above the door to add the transom. Now this discussion I think ties into what we call shop built units and site built units. And let me explain. A shop built unit is, is built in the factory and arrives on the site as a single unit whereas a site-built unit arrives on site as individual openings and are placed uh, on site together in the wall. If I were to come to my opening menu, I'll click on a colonial exterior door, pick up a door style, well, let's choose this one and place it in the drawing. Next, if I wanted a side light next to it, I can come to my window library, choose side light. I'm going to zoom up so we can see what's happening here. Right now, I'm creating a site built unit, meaning I'm drawing two independent openings from the libraries as per the question that I had. <laughs> And if, I, if you watch closely, as soon as I get close enough, you'll see a little blue box in the middle. That's a, uh, the ability for Soplin to create a site built unit would add a mullion between the two. So that little blue box there is a mullion. And as I get closer and closer, in this case I'm all the way to the edge of the door, this is, allows the obviously mullion to be removed. But if I click now, this is now a site built unit and Softland is going to consider them as such. And what that means is that certain aspects of their edits will consider both openings, the interior trim, exterior trim, uh, shutters if I wanted to, uh, your curtains or your uh, interior finishes. 
if and other aspects of the openings are still independent so the opening size or the grill work or in this case adding a transom if I add a transom and let's take a look uh, let's generate this in a 3d point of view there's my front door I guess first what I should do here is correct the position of my front side light I'll edit that change the position or offset in this case I'm going to say bottom of wall to bottom of opening is zero I'll step a little closer to it and if I were to for example uh, edit the door and this is where the problem comes from or arises if I add a transom to that door and one of the properties of the opening is if you edit the opening in the plan tab there's an add transom it'll ask me for the size we'll just assume one foot is enough hit OK and a transom is added to that opening however in this case because it's a uh, site built unit they're individual openings it's just going to add the transom to the door itself I'll hit cancel to remove the transom if I come back to my floor plan from the draw menu come back to opening come to the exterior door entry library there's a number of door and side light combinations already provided for example here's the door and single side light similar to what I've just drawn there and I can add it but this is now a shop built unit meaning it comes from the factory as a single unit and as that being the case it draws as a single door and window and if I come to well, I'll come back to 3d so we can see it work here I'll edit this door and window combo go to add transom and it will add a transom that considers both door and side light So in order for the side light to be added, it needs to come as a single multi-component opening as opposed to be drawing separately. However, let's say, for example, the door and side light from the entry library isn't appropriate. You don't like the style of door. You like this style of door, which is why you drew them separately to begin with. So how do we take this arrangement and allow the transom to be added well that answer lies as follows if I come back to my upper floor plan come to edit and unit openings this allows me to take two windows or two doors or a window and a door as we have here and if I click on it it will ask me for a new name we'll call this custom entry uh, forgive my spelling I got my caps lock on I'm going to add this to my entry library And this now becomes a shop built unit it's a single opening and as a single opening I can go to draw opening locate it let me make this bigger oops at the end of my entry library will be this new window or sorry window door combo there's my custom entry and so I can add it for the next house if it's the same door and side light arrangement it's now part of my library and as such leaving the one here on the drawing as well I can come back here in 3d so we can see it right away edit this now single opening add transom and it will add it to span both the window and the door together okay so to briefly go over that we come to edit unit openings we then click on the two or more openings that you've drawn as separate openings and I've already done this so it's not going to show us anything but you click on those and then it will ask us for the name of the library and opening to add it to 
Okay, so I got a question here. I missed the part of how did it add to the library. It again is through edit, unit openings, and then clicking on the openings that are drawn separately but put together or drawn side by each. Okay. Our next question deals with the topic of site plans and is as follows. When I make a site plan, the ground runs through the basement and under the deck it appears as though there is empty space. I'm going to quickly draw a deck towards the back so we get to answer that question. To create a site plan, the recommended method is to, from your main floor plan, which I have here, switching this drawing to site mode, coming from the draw menu and clicking on building option, and then generate building option. This will allow me to save a drawing, and we're going to call it site plan. And this is the result of using that tool. It creates building outlines of the building itself based on the perimeter of exterior bearing walls. And it creates a building outline also of any exterior structure such as the deck. Well, to finish the site plan, we can come to draw a site line property. And in this case, I'm just going to sketch with the line method just a example of what the site might look like. So that's my property. So I've sketched a property around the building outlines. And if I were to assemble my site plan, you see it's over here in the site plans category of my navigation tree. If I right click, add to model. When I've added it to the model, it's just adding it as the highest floor. It's not where it needs to go. A site plan should be the first floor assembled. So if I right click on it, there's an option here to move to bottom. So the first drawing here is the site plan. Next will be the lower floor plan, then the upper. Coming back to my three-dimensional view. Let me back up so we can see it better. When we draw a site and add it to our model, that uh, site plan becomes the ground. And if I wheel around, you can see that the building outline becomes the hole in the ground, the excavation. Each building outline has it, and this is where the question comes from. Why is there a hole under my deck? Coming back to my site plan drawing, if I edit the building outline that was created by the deck, there's the option to remove the cuts ground option. If we don't want that particular building option to cut the ground, we can turn that off, hit OK, back in 3D, there's no longer a hole under my deck. Okay, yet the hole remains for the house itself. To finish this lesson, I suppose we come back to the uh, site plan drawing. From here at the end of the Draw menu, go to Site Options and Building Position, and we'll say, well, that's seven feet down because the hole in the ground or the building outline by default assumes a depth of seven feet. If that needs to be something else, you now know where you can change it. And now that I've moved the house down seven feet to fill the hole back in 3D, the whole house moves down. Now this might be a different example because it's a split level, I suppose. You only need four feet for the one half and seven feet for the other. We can do that, but that would just mean creating different building outlines from the left and the right side. To do that, I could go to draw building outline and manually trace it. But the hole in the ground, basically, it's all under the house. So we really wouldn't be able to tell that you know there's actually an extra depth under the one side of the building. However, if I move my cursor into, or my point of view, into the building, I'll walk forward through the wall. There's my main floor plan. And if I move through the floor and into the basement, there's my knee wall, for example, as well. We'll see that there's no grade 
or ground through my basement. I need another knee wall there as well to finish that up. Um, there's a couple of questions that are coming through in our chat. Yes, uh, first one is, is the top of the drawing assumed to be north? That is correct. Top of the drawing, point straight north, and there's a north arrow button to indicate that. If your north needs to be elsewhere, click on it, and you can dictate where north is. That is also under File, Project Options, and North Options. The direction of north can be modified here. Okay, there's another question here from Jonathan, and it looks quite lengthy. Um, we don't have a lot of time. We only, I want to actually cover a couple more questions that were asked, and I want to go over those. This one looks a little bit more involved. If you do have other questions, and I'll, I'll repeat this at the end, by all means you can uh, ask those questions again through the email that you uh, got to join this class, and I'll address any specific questions that I cannot cover in our short time today uh, through email. So Jonathan, it just looks a little bit cumbersome and, and lengthy, so we're going to wait on that question and, and get you to ask it uh, through an email. The next question I have deals with the topic of soft list, generating a material report. So I'm going to get one started here. I'm going to generate a material report of our whole building. While that generates, the question is as follows. When reviewing a detailed material list and soft list, there are line items, such as beams or headers, that are listed in the report that I cannot easily locate on the plans. Is there a search that can be performed on the plan to locate these specific materials? And sure enough, there is. And I'll show you where that uh, is located. I'm going to just hit OK or No to these uh, variable prompts. They're not part of the lesson. These don't really matter. So we'll just say no to all of those, and it will finish the report generation. And for example, let me scroll down to, because one of the questions was the header. And here we have an opening header, and we're not quite sure where that is on the drawing. Well, if you find the item and right-click on it, from the little pop-up that appears, and again, this is with the right mouse button, there's a highlight entities. Selecting that will open up the floor plan drawing and highlight the objects that contributed to that material item. So in this case, this wall contributed to that header. Actually, it's a combined header. Combined header means any header that is, I think, six feet or less will actually combine them and order you a, a more orderable length. So you can right-click on the material name, choose Highlight Entity, and it will do just that. What happens as well is that it brings that drawing into soft list mode. And since we're here, there's another method of creating or giving you that highlight. So while in soft list mode, there's a button here labeled Materials. If I press it, it will actually generate a quick listing of the materials that are on this drawing. And here they are. So for example, if I want to know what objects are attributing to the anchor bolts, I click on anchor bolts and it's going to highlight, in this case, the sill plate. So the anchor bolts for this sill plate are now highlighted because they are you know, adding to that quantity of anchor bolts. So two ways we can determine what objects, or sorry, what materials are found and where they are found on the drawing. We can either highlight the entities from the actual generated report, or if we bring that drawing to soft list mode, we can generate the listing of materials clicking on the object or the material itself, in this case siding, and it says, well, the exterior walls, because they're highlighted, these are the walls that have siding. Okay, our next example, uh, its topic is plan sets. And the question is as follows. 
how can I design my own title block with my own company logo and add that to a plan set? Let's first create a plan set. So I'll right click on plan set and say add plan sets. I'll say they are an architectural D size. And from here I can select to add a border. We do ship with a series of standard borders defined by page size and a slight style. This one by its preview you can see it just has a border on the left side, sorry right side. This border just has a border on the lower right, and this border, as its name implies, is just blank. I'll choose the side border, hit open, and then I'll create the first page. We'll just call it main floor. Oop, my caps lock is on. Hit OK. That page is then created and applies that border. If I wanted to add the uh, main floor plan, which is labeled upper floor, just a drag and drop, drag and drop it on. And there's my plan set with the border. Now the question is, we want to change the layout of that title block. Obviously you don't want the soft plan logo, you want your own company logo, and you might want to rearrange some of the information on that title block as well. Uh, another question here about the date format. We'll, we'll answer that as well. It's fairly straightforward and simple. So in order to create a custom border, what we need to do is we need to open up a special project. That project is called Title Block, and we'll find it here. Click on File and Open. Change your look in. It's by default will be in the project we are in. But we want to change it to, first of all, the Soft Plan folder where it's installed. Once there, you'll discover that there's a title block folder. If we open it up, there'll be a title block project file. Select it to open. I'll save my changes for this project. This is asking me for a name for the materialist report that I have. We'll just call it report. That project closes, and in its place, the title block project is now opened. There are no active drawings when you first get here, but you'll see them on the left side navigation. In this case, I'm going to open up my D side border for 24 by 36, and I want to customize this. To do so, I'm going to come to File, Save As. This will allow me to make a copy of that border. I'll just call it Custom Border. So it's a 24 by 36 custom border. The border itself is just a drawing, and you have all the tools that you have to manipulate that drawing to change its layout as you see fit. For example, let's get rid of this logo, which is just an image file. So if I can erase it, I'll do so. And then if I want to insert a new logo, hopefully you have your logo as a uh, separate image file, JPEG or bitmap or whatever. We can import that image file by clicking on File, Import, and Image. It will then ask you to locate the file itself. I saved one quickly here under my pictures. There's a company logo. And I sketch a box indicating the insertion point of it. If necessary, I can move it or adjust it so it fits the area of that border. And if I want to change the size of the box that it's in, well, maybe I can move this line up or do whatever else is necessary to rearrange the border to suit how you like that border to be laid out. I'll point out the information stamps that we see here. First of all, go to your company name and the company street address, etc. This information is automatically filled out in the uh, border, assuming you have under file and system options your company information already filled out. So if you come to your company information under system options, 
fill this information out to suit your company, that will automatically fill in in your title block. Towards the bottom is the project information. Now that project information obviously is going to change based on which project is there. So what you can do is go to File, Project Options, and fill out the information here for that particular project. Now I'm in the title block project, so changing anything here, or adding anything here is really pointless. What I'll do is that when we're done with this, we'll come back to the original project we had the split level home on, and we'll show you how we can add that information to it. Before we do that, though, one final question about the date. There is a date feature here, and if it doesn't fit, we can change that date stamp, and I'll show you how we can get these stamps. I'm going to delete that one, and a listing of all the known stamps are shown here. Clicking on the Stamps button, and there's a date short, which is the short format, so it won't write it out completely. I'll add that instead, and so I'm using the short form of the date, so it won't be as long. I'll save that drawing and I'll come back to my original project with a split level home. Now that I have the custom border created, I want to use it on this already existing plan set. To do so, I can right click on the name of the plan set, in this case plan set 1, and hit edit. Brings up the similar dialog as we had when we first created it, where I can come into the border option and this time select my custom border, open it up, hit OK, and now updates to have my own custom company logo. The date is now a short form date, so that might suit your spacing better. And as far as the project information, now that I'm in a project, I can come back to File, Project Options, where I can fill out any information necessary. This is the 23 Main Street. Um, there are a pull down here for the city, but as you can see as I select it here, the city list is blank. A quick tip, if you change or select your state first, this will then populate the city list with known cities in that state. Uh, if you've chosen your state and the particular town is not listed there, you can manually type it in as well. You don't have to pick from the list, but just so you know, um, you might find it easier to choose your state at which point the list of the cities will be populated. So once you have that filled out, hit OK, and that information is automatically filled in uh, on the title block. Okay, so that, uh, what about promises? They're also included there. Um, let me just briefly show you, I guess, since it was question. Ontario, for example, cities in Ontario. So there are also the, the Canadian provinces are shown there. But again, if, if the city or province isn't there, you can manually type in those fields. Okay. So that concludes uh, this week's Friday's Fundamental. I thank you very much for joining me this week, today. Uh, uh, a reminder, this will be posted on our YouTube channel, so if there are something that you perhaps want to go over, you can, uh, early next week I believe, you can go on to our YouTube channel and uh, review the video there. So thanks everybody, and you all have a great weekend. Thanks everyone.